Remember, a Hallmark car when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a dramatic true story from the life of Simone Bolivar on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tomorrow, we celebrate George Washington's birthday. As Washington fought for our independence and became the father of our country, so did Simon Bolivar bring democracy and freedom to South America. And the great liberator, Washington, was his constant source of inspiration. Tonight, we tell you the true story of Seymour Bolivar's saddest and greatest moment. Now, here is Frank Goss. 365 days a year, hearts are lightened by Hallmark cards. Happy days are made happier. Lonely days become no longer lonely. And every day is a brighter day when the mail brings a Hallmark card. For Hallmark cards are more than just a message of cheer or sympathy or love. They are the right message, thoughtfully expressed in the right design, the right words. And that hallmark on the back shows that you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, who celebrate their 30th anniversary at your favorite theater with The Long, Long Trailer, starring Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Attempts at freedom in South America failed. Simon Bolivar, commander of the Revolutionary Army, was forced to flee to the safety of British Jamaica. Spain was strong. The cause of freedom, weak. Bolivar, with only a handful of men and without funds, tried desperately to hold the revolution together. The men are beginning to grumble about the training, General. Uh Oh? They say they are so few that it is useless to consider them even part of an army. Uh Oh. The next time they complain, Lieutenant Amistoy, explain that though they are few, they are the most important part of the new army. These men here will be training the others when the time comes. All of you, tell that to your men! Yes, General. Tomorrow as usual. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, sir. Lieutenant Amistoy. Felix. Were you talking about the man or yourself? I suppose I was talking about our situation, my general. At times it seems as if we stand still, waiting to do nothing ever again. Huh. Uh, no one is more aware of our circumstance than myself. Ah, we will have an army, Felix. Felix, word has come that the ship Avon arrives sometime this night from New Granada. I want you to meet her. Ignacio Iturbe may be aboard. If so, bring him here to me. Iturbe may have been able to raise money that will help us gather our army. I would sell my soul to swing a sword at Monteverde just once before I die. (laughs) We will all do that. Now go. Go, and God go with you. There is no need for that. You recognized. I am here to see General Bolivar. Can you take me to him? Guard, has Lieutenant Amistoy returned yet? Uh, 
Ah, what is this? Sir? Are you the officer in charge here? I am. Then it is most urgent that you take me to His Excellency at once. All right, on your post, man. Yes, General. What is your business with the general? My name is Annette Bellet. My home is on this island. I assure you what I have to say to him is very important. Ah, uh, so in that case you may speak. I am Simon Bolivar. You... You are the general? Yes. <laughs> Somehow I understood he was a much older man. What is so urgent? I have been visiting a new Granada. I have just returned on the Avon. There was a man among the passengers named Cordoba. He is a Spanish officer on Captain Monteverdi's staff. Although he was not in uniform, I recognized him. Cordoba? I I know of him. Did he land here? Yes, he is on Jamaica at this moment. Is he not a threat to you? (laughs) Any Spanish officer is a threat to me. I believe there is a price on my head. On the boat, there were many of your countrymen. They spoke of a great man named Bolivar and told how he would free a whole land. Is this the way a great man reacts to the news that he is in danger? I thank you for the warning. You... you are interested in freedom? In the revolution? No, I am not, General. Your revolution means war and death. I have seen enough of that. Good night, Your Excellency. Good night, Annette Penny. Water is cool. You cannot go on this way, Petron. A man with a fever must sleep and rest. The dreams are worse than going without a rest. Uh, that that is much better, Carlos. Thank you, General. Ah, uh, Felix, I've been waiting for you. I came as quickly as I could. All right, Carlos. Don Pablo Morillo and ten thousand Spanish troops have been ordered to sail from Cadiz. Thirty-four warships, seventy transports. <sighs> They mean to stop us once and for all, eh? Yes, and they will, unless we act. How is the resistance in the cities? Useless. Our people are helpless. There is no one to protect them. They are without hope. Mm. They say the revolution is ended. A peasant cries out and he is flayed alive. The Spanish offer a peso apiece for Republican ears. This is the way they are replanting the Spanish crown on our country. Uh... General, listen to me. I have spoken to the others. Our people would rather die than live under the Spanish. We could go back by night and cross the country by night and raise an army by night. We have time before Murillo lands his troops. And then we would meet his 10,000 with a half-starved, unequipped band of men who have never seen a battlefield. No, once we tried that, I saw my men cut down like grass at Porto Cablo. We have right on our side, General, and that is strength. Our enemies have muskets and five years in the field on their side. The others want to go, Marino, Mendes, Rivas. They have no wish to stay here and rot. Nor do I. What will we do, General? We will wait. Soon we will have answer from London. It would be advantageous for England to assist us at this moment. I have every reason to believe the, the Foreign Office will listen to my petition. In the interim, we wait. Is that what you want me to tell the others? Yes. Tell them we still wait. Felix? Felix. I wait too, old friend. Forgive me, General. Forgive me. Forgive you for thinking only of your country. If all thought and fought as you, my friend, the revolution would have been won long ago. Uh, what uh, what news of Ignacio Iturbi? He is dead, my General. Dead? Murdered by a faithful servant as he slept on board ship. They say it was engineered by one of Monteverde's officers. He hires people to kill. What officer? A man named Cordoba. General. May I come in? Of course. It seemed somehow that I should see you to thank you again for the warning of last night. The warning meant nothing to you then? It means something to you now? Yes, my men are on the watch for Cordoba. You look at me so strangely. (laughs) The warning was not the true reason you came to me last night. Was it merely to look at me and make something certain in your own mind? Yes. Some things must be certain, General. 
They tell me you spend many hours sitting out there watching the sea. I look at the land beyond the sea. My land. Is your wife there, Jennifer? My wife is buried on a hill above Paris. Then you have a sweetheart across the sea? No. <laughs> Being a soldier is not a complete life. A man must have a woman. Or are you satisfied to be in love with freedom? To sit and wait and sharpen your weapons to go back to the killing? You puzzled me before. You puzzle me now. I do not like your war and your revolution and your cry for freedom. It is a just cause and it is my life. And your love. My brother believed as you believe. He died fighting for your freedom in one of your armies. What was your brother's name? Louis Benet. He was killed at Porto Cablo. I'm sorry. But the cause is just. Do you leave? I disturb you. It seems we cannot talk. It is because I cannot talk of armies and revolution and freedom. Is that all that is inside of you? You came here tonight to sit and speak to a woman. Yes, that is why I am here. How long has it been since you have spoken to a woman? Weeks. Months, perhaps. And how long has it been since you have kissed a woman? A century. Stay with me a while, Simon Bolivar. Stay with me. I walked here once by the sea when I was a very young man. And did you dream of revolution even then? I dreamed of freedom for my people. I dreamed of the French Revolution and of the United States and of a man named Washington. Washington? And General George Washington. He led his people to freedom as I shall lead mine. And was it hard for him? For him there was Valley Forge as I have my island of Jamaica. And as he conquered despair, so shall I. Is there to be no life for Sir Simon Bolivar, the man? Is he to give nothing to himself? Annette, do you believe I have never said those same words to myself? Oh, yes, and I have done more. Many times I have promised myself that I will leave the revolution. I will go to France or Italy and take another life. It, it will never happen. Uh, the moon is failing, Annette. I must return. But if the revolution should... If... If it all fails, you would come to me? I would come to you, Annette. In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Yesterday afternoon, I shopped for a friend's birthday present, and as usual, I debated a half dozen times before I finally decided on something I felt was right for him. Then I picked up a Hallmark card to go with the gift, and I thought again how easy and how much fun it is to choose a Hallmark card. There, right in front of you, is a selection so wide and so varied you find cards that seem to be designed personally for each person you know. For your friends who love a laugh, there are all kinds of humorous Hallmark cards. And then for friends whose taste runs to the artistic, you can choose from scores of beautiful designs created by Hallmark artists. The verses by gifted writers. These are cards that will be saved to be enjoyed again and again. And for those dear ones whose greatest happiness lies in your love for them. There are Hallmark cards that tell them sincerely and unforgettably of your feeling. You see, for every person in your circle of friendship and affection, there are Hallmark cards that say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And the Hallmark and crown on the back says, you care enough to send the very best. 
And now, Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Simone Bolivar. invasion of British Jamaica by the Spanish didn't occur. But for Simon Bolivar, there was the eternal waiting for men, for food, for money. And as the waiting grew longer, the strength of the great liberator grew weaker. Then one night, a visitor came to see him, Maxwell Hyslop, an envoy of the Duke of Manchester, who was then governor of Jamaica. How is he? Worse than when you saw him last, Senor Islam. The spells come and go more frequently now. Most of the time he is burning with fever or shaking with cold. He will not rest. He paces back and forth like a caged animal. Can't you do anything for him? Make him comfortable? <laughs> I am only his servant. It is something else, something worse than the fever which tears at him now. He has been most anxious for the answer from England. He will be pleased to see you. Max! Max, old friend, welcome, welcome. Ah, the sight of you does me good. Carlos, have we wine? No, no, please, General. This is only a short visit. Nonsense. See, see if we have a glass around General, here, I could not drink your wine. Huh? Not with the kind of news I bring you now. It would choke me. Sit down. Uh, will there be anything? No, no, no. That is all, Carlos. See. General, the papers you so carefully prepared were brought to the attention of the Foreign Office by Mr. Richard Wellesley. England's advantage in assisting you to raise men at arms to fight the Spanish is without question. Max, Max, you can speak to me. What did they say? They sympathize with you, General, but they cannot help you. Are they aware that Monteverde is in Caracas growing stronger by the hour? Do they know about Morillo's fleet? Do they understand that this new Spain under Ferdinand is more decadent and more treacherous than the old one? Where are England's great statesmen these days? Can... Of course. Of course they know all these things. They knew them before I did. There were some other comments. Some members of Parliament did not feel that Latin America is ready for independence yet. Others refuse to believe there is a revolution. For 300 years, my countrymen have been starved and slaughtered by the Spanish crown. When is a nation ready to rule itself? The Duke of Manchester asked me to see you, General. I am repeating his instructions. Yes, yes, I know. Forgive my impatience. But may I speak not as a representative of the governor? No, we are friends, Max. We are old friends. Then I know the humiliation it has caused you asking for help abroad. I hoped, as you hoped, that the Foreign Office would give you funds and help you rearm and fight back. I am truly sorry that they have acted otherwise, but if not English help, perhaps some other source. Petion, the president of Haiti, he believes in freedom. Yes, yes, perhaps some other source. Your country is not dead as long as your sword exists, and you will go back some way, somehow. Ah, you've been an unfortunate soldier, but you are a great man. <laughs> How long can a man watch a lizard what? How long can a man lie in a hammock and watch lizards on the ceiling and dream of freedom? I am a fool, Max, a fool! Wait, General, wait, wait! now? Yes. Is there anything you wish? Food? Water? No, no, no. I did not ask you when you first came in because you were burning with the fever, but I will ask you now. Something has gone wrong and you are here. Why did you come to me? I promised I would come to you. Tell me what it is to feel as you do, to have a life that belongs to yourself and not to a country or people. So it has become hopeless. No arms, no men, no money, 
They cannot expect me to go on. I have given up a fool's task. There is no reason trying to carry it further. You, you knew when we met before a moment like this would happen, huh? Yes. Could you love me, Annette? Yes. What is it? Could you love me? Or have they taken too much from you already? Only time will answer that. Then I am willing to wait. How will you tell them? I will go back and resign my commission. I want you to carry a message to Colonel Marino, Captain Rivas, Captain Mendez, Lieutenant Mamistoy. Tell them to meet tomorrow morning without fail. Yes, Excellency. That is all. Good night. Uh, that came from my quarters. Yes, Excellency. C Carlos. General. You? What is it, man? What is wrong? You. You still live. General, he has a knife. Lower your rifle. We all know this man. Carlos, what is it? Do not come closer, General. You. You would kill me. I have killed you. You are mad. He paid me to do it. Cordoba? Yes, and I shall do it now. No! No! Excellency, you are all right? See, si. Carlos is dead. Quickly to my tent. Yes. Felix. General. You, you are not harmed. No. Felix, what happened? I was concerned for you. I, I heard Cordoba was here. I fell asleep on your bed, waiting for your return. Cordoba paid my servant to kill me. Carlos thought you were me. Uh, you are safe. Lie, lie still, uh, Felix. Sentry, sentry! A doctor, find a doctor. Yes, General. It is too late for a doctor. No, 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 you cannot die for me. Oh, Felix, you do not know what I was about to do. I would rather die for you, General. Now, now you must realize. You are the revolution. That is why the Spanish tried to kill you. Without you, there is no hope for, for freedom. Felix? Felix! Felix. Seven schooners, 2,000 muskets with bayonets, powder and lead. Is that right? That is what Pétion has promised? It's unbelievable. You have seen the dispatch, the seal of the president of Haiti? Yes. Well, goodbye, General. We will meet again in Bogota. Yes. Annette. I have been waiting to say goodbye. Alone. Annette, I... Do not say anything. I know your love is for the land and the people. I cannot understand it, but I can understand that a few men are made that way, and it is impossible to change that. But there is that one moment when he might forget it. Yes. I will watch the ship from the rock. As it goes by, I will say, the revolution goes by. I must go now. I have lost my dream, Simon Bolivar. But you have regained you. Goodbye. throughout Latin America. And he defeated the Spanish army at every turn. 
He established free governments and constitutions and democratic law. He gave his repose and all his life to his country. He fought for her and he freed her. Indeed, he became the George Washington of South America. Like General Washington, he had met his valley forge and had conquered it. remember the first time your mother made you write a thank you note? There you sat, pencil in hand, that big blank sheet of white paper staring at you, defying you to fill it with words. Ooh, what punishment. You know, I've decided that big blank piece of paper was half the problem, because recently I got a thank you note from my little niece. It was written in some gay Hallmark note paper. There were little blue forget-me-nots all over the cover with two cute cherubs floating in a basket drawn by bluebirds. And I realized my niece wanted to use that pretty paper. And that's true of all Hallmark note paper. Yes, everyone finds these small decorative papers inviting to use. They come in many different designs, some with flowers, some with a touch of whimsy, some with a modern motif. All of them ideally sized for your short notes, for the thank you or invitation that should be brief. And like Hallmark cards, these attractive note papers have the Hallmark and crown on the back to show that you carry enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. You know, Frank, I, I used to know a very lovely lady who, who was one of our most famous hostesses. She once told me that a sure way to get on her preferred guest list was to be prompt in the matter of thank you notes. <laughs> Seems like those hallmark notes you just told us about would be mighty handy to have around in a situation like that. <laughs> they are, Mr. Barrymore. They're helpful for almost any occasion you can think of. Uh, suppose you tell the folks about our story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame next week, Frank. Next week, Mr. Barrymore, we will present one of the most important and amazing incidents of modern history, a true and highly dramatic episode from the life of America's elder statesman, Bernard Baruch. Oh, well, 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 that sounds unusual, Frank. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Here's an important announcement from the makers of Hallmark Cards. Boys and girls of high school age can win big cash prizes for themselves and for their schools in the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. All you do is nominate a person for the Hallmark Hall of Fame and tell, in a brief essay, why you chose that person. See the February 3rd issues of Scholastic Magazines for full details of the rules and cash prizes for the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Prude. Our script tonight by Robert H. Nolan. Our guitarist, Jose Barroso. Original music by Jerry Goldsmith. Featured in our cast, Charlotte Lawrence, Lamont Johnson, Harry Bartell, Ben Wright, Jack Crucian, Tony Barrett. You are also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time when we'll present a true story from the life of Bernard Baruch. And on March 7th, the story of nurse Edith Cavill starring Miss Helen Hayes on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.